All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here uh, and watching online. Uh, my name is Satyajit Salgar. Uh, I'm here with Ibrahim, and we're here to talk about the YouTube Live platform and the YouTube Live APIs. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the platform, what creators are doing. Ibrahim is going to dive into the details of the API and show you a demo. Uh, and we'll save some time at the end for questions. Does that sound good? All right, we're also going to take questions uh, from the live streaming audience on the Google Moderator link that you see online. Uh, so we look forward to your questions. All right. This is a live streaming talk with a live streaming demo that will be live streamed, but we can go deeper. Someone live streams this, so it is possible. All right. Um, YouTube. How many people watched a YouTube video in the last month? All right. You are part of one billion people, uh, which is about half the people that are on the internet right now. Uh, they watch six billion hours every month, uh, and really across platforms. Right, so 25% of our views globally are on mobile devices. Uh, YouTube is also the largest search engine in the world. So clearly, we believe YouTube and video is a great tool to build engagement and create great experiences for your audience. We think live particularly so. So I'm going to talk a little bit about live on YouTube. All right, how many people recognize this image? Right, almost everyone. All right, so uh, for those of you who don't, uh, on the 14th of October, a, an Austrian gentleman by the name of Felix Baumgartner got into that space capsule, uh, went up 24 miles into space, looked down over New Mexico, uh, and then jumped. Uh, the jump was about 10 minutes, and he was in free fall for about four minutes. Uh, this is what we saw internet traffic looking like during that period. Right? Uh, yeah, a couple of people like me stayed for the press conference, but this was the peak. And at its peak, 8.2 million people tuned in, uh, and there were 52 million playbacks. That is the kind of scale and excitement that a live event on YouTube can generate. Uh, by the way, fun piece of trivia, at that point, those four minutes, about 8% of alternate traffic was that, that video. All right, fortunately, you don't have to jump, into, jump from space to create live great live entertainment. Uh, and we're seeing tons and tons of partners do that today on YouTube. Uh, up, on your, up, up on the top left over there, whenever soccer powerhouse Spartak Moscow plays in Russia, we see traffic, live traffic from Russia spike. Uh, live sports is a great way uh, to build entertainment on YouTube, whether it's uh, cricket in India or Major League Baseball that live streams its games internationally or the NBA Development League, or it's really sports that anyone looks for that are hard to find anywhere in the world. Uh, for example, uh, surfing from Australia, uh, boys high school soccer, or badminton in Indonesia, local hockey in India. All of these experiences are live on YouTube, and audiences are, being, audiences are finding these, and ch channels are building their audiences on YouTube. But our vision for sports isn't just the game. We think there's tons of live stuff around the game, whether it's the tunnel cam as you're walking into the auditorium, whether it's the interview afterwards. These are all part of the live sports experience. Uh, how many people know uh, who Juventus is? Not that many people. All right, a couple of people. So Juventus is a soccer club in Italy. They just won the Serie A league. Uh, that is a live stream uh, that the club put together when, when the entire town celebrated their win. Right. Tens of thousands of people tuned in, and it was, part, it was a way for their global fans to participate in that. We see this happening you know, in tons and tons of uh, dimensions. Music is another great one. Um, whether it's you know, the, ultra, uh, the Ultra Music Festival in Miami, or Coachella, uh, or AKB48 in Japan, or that gentleman, Sai, who debuted his new album in a live stream uh, on YouTube, we're seeing artists of all sorts come to YouTube and create great live experiences for their audience. And we think this is just the beginning. We think this is going to extend to all sorts of independent artists. And I say artists to mean much more than just musicians. Of course, we think gaming is going to be a huge part of live on YouTube. Uh, we're starting to see this already with lots of major esports tournaments coming onto the platform. Uh, Riot Games, for example, uh, streams its League of, League of Legends tournaments. We're seeing tons more. Uh, we recently did uh, an API integration with uh, Call of Duty 2, uh, Black Ops, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which actually allows you to live stream your multiplayer gameplay. 
Now, we all understand the value of watching someone who's really good play, right? Uh, but it extends to more than that. For example, a few weeks ago, I was clicking through the Call of Duty shelf, and I happened to stumble on someone playing, and it became pretty clear within a couple of seconds that this person actually wasn't very good. Um, but suddenly she paused and actually started chatting with the audience saying, hey, thank you for watching me play. I know I'm not that great, but I'm getting a lot better. And you know, this is how, what I did recently. Now, the act of you know, two or three of us that were watching her made her experience better. It became more than just a game for her. That is the power of live streaming and connecting with an audience that we're seeing every day on YouTube. Um, and it extends to entertainment of all sorts, whether it's product launches uh, or conferences, exactly like this, uh, or very elaborate April Fool's pranks. Do, do, do people recognize the YouTube April Fool's pranks in the top right? A few people. Yeah, this was a live stream that went on for 12 hours where these very brave anchors actually read uh, the titles and descriptions of basically hundreds of thousands of YouTube videos. Um, or or something, um, something like red carpet premieres. What can we do that's better? Uh, check out the multicam on top. You can't do this anywhere else. So we weren't, weren't, we weren't just streaming red cam one particular view, but we were letting audiences select where they wanted to go. We can do this across sports, um, or sorry, across genres. For example, recently the PGA uh, live streamed uh, just Tiger Woods. So if you wanted to follow just Tiger Woods during a tournament, you could actually do that. And of course, this extends to much, much more. Uh, it also goes to uh, news and current events. We have the Pope on YouTube. Uh, we have the presidential debate on YouTube. Uh, and not just the US presidential debate. What you see here on the top right is the first ever presidential debate in Kenya. Uh, and we had a, a huge traffic spike in Kenya, and we we're wondering what it is. And it turned out to be this event. Um, tons of international news channels uh, broadcast live on YouTube. And of course, we have a lot of topical coverage. Now, we're really excited by everything that our creator community is doing on YouTube. But what makes this possible? What we're really excited about is the powerful solution that we've built. Uh, the YouTube engineering team has worked hard over the last couple of years to build a solution that I feel is, I feel is amazing. Uh, we, as a viewer, we offer you unmatched stream quality. Uh, we offer things like adaptive bitrate. So as you move around and your bandwidth changes, we figure that out and you, don't have, and you don't suffer a loss in stream quality. We let you skip back and forth in the stream. And we work across devices, right? So whether you go from your desktop to your phone, it just works. Unmatched scale and quality. As a creator, we offer you ability to easily insert ads uh, to send us just one high quality stream, and we do all the transloading in real time for you in the cloud into all the necessary devices and resolutions. We offer you multiple camera angles. We let you insert ads, we let you do slates, we make it really easy to insert closed captions. There's a lot more, and we're just getting started. Uh, we're gonna continue to build out this platform and make it more valuable to our creator community and to developers. We released a live API, which lets partners and developers build incredible things. Uh, thank you to all the beta partners, many of you are in the room, uh, for helping us grow this API, and we're excited to see what more you do with this. Uh, finally, what we're really excited about is the fact that we're making this platform more accessible to creators. Yesterday, we announced that anyone on YouTube with over 1,000 subscribers can now stream live. Uh, we think this will make this platform even more valuable to develop for, and we're really excited about both what the creator communi community can do as well as how you can take advantage of this as developers. With that, Ibrahim, do you want to tell them about the API? Sure. So I'm Ibrahim Mulukaya, Developer Programs Engineer at YouTube. Today, I will actually give an overview of the API itself. Then I will talk the suggested settings for the live streaming. And we'll go over a little bit on the Java sample code. At the end, we'll see the Android demo, actually. We'll see it live, since we are talking live. So let's get it started. YouTube Live Streaming API. With the Live Streaming API, you can actually schedule, update, and manage your live events on YouTube. You can associate your own streams and make them happen inside these events. If you are a YouTube content partner, you can also insert advertisements. I want to talk right now a little bit about the concepts. 
first concept I want to talk today is the broadcast. Think about the broadcast as a calendar event, like a show, like something, like a news that's scheduled for some time, and it's like an event container. And when you go to youtube.com live, slash live, you will see this image. You will see actually see the events that are either, either happening right now or they are scheduled for some future time. The second concept is the stream. Stream is actually what you are sending to YouTube. It is your entry points to those events. So actually I want to differentiate those two. The broadcast is the event, the, time, the event that was actually scheduled for some specific time, and the stream is your own content, actually the entry point to YouTube. So let's actually cover up those. Broadcast was the event, the event metadata, and the stream was the live streaming, your content. The reason actually we separated together, we wanted to make it, we want you to have like flexibility so that you can have like multiple streams. You can switch in, in and out those streams to the broadcast event itself. And if you are maybe like having your own streams and actually you, you use that stream, you may want to use the same stream, same ingestion settings to another event. So we make it like flexible that we separated those two. And last but not the least, the queue point. Queue point is in, in stream ads. They are built on the partner API. If you are a YouTube content partner, you will be also able to like insert advertisement. So how they play with each other? As I said, the broadcast is the event. And when you want your stream to actually your content to appear in the event, you are just binding them together. And when you want to insert an advertisement, you are inserting the advertisement to event. When you co bind this stream to the broadcast, your stream actually happens to be in this broadcast. It's streamed inside this event. When you want another stream, you can connect them. There's always one-to-one -one mapping. Right now, I want to a bit deep dive on this concept. So the broadcast is the metadata, as I explained. It has title, description, scheduled time. You can make it private or as public event, with the new platform, you can actually enable the recording. So if the users happen, didn't see your live stream, they may go to YouTube and still see the video later on. And you can enable them use the DVR settings such that they can go back and forth inside the video. This was a scheduling the event. And what about the managing the event, the life cycle? So when you first created the event, we start as a created state. And when you bind them together and it's ready to start, we are in the ready state. So users see that your event will, will start soon. And as an optional state, you can go to preview. So this is actually a really good state that actually, before your event go, goes to live, you can monitor your stream. We are actually sending you another monitor URL that you can go there and actually you can see your stream before it goes public. And when you are ready to go, Magic happens. It goes straight live. And every good thing needs to end at some point. So if you want to complete this, you just go to complete cycle. What about the stream? Stream was your entry point. So it is where you're actually, your streamer talks to YouTube. So you create this entry point. You set a name for yourself so that you can remember. And then you set the highest bit rate you want to support. You want to set the highest resolution you want to support. And one thing really important about the stream is that entry point, once you create this, you are actually getting a RTMP URL and stream name so that you know which, where is the point you will talk to access this stream, to send your streamer. And the latest one is the queue point. As I explained, it was the stream. It was the in-stream in ad. So you're setting the in-stream ad to start and how long it will be. Let's remember how they interact with each other again. And your stream is binded to the broadcast so that your stream happens to be in this event. And once you, once you want to insert advertisement, if you're a content partner, you are using the insert. So how many people actually used live streaming before in any channel? OK, I see like few people. And how many people actually use encoding and decoding? Maybe not in live streaming. OK, I see a few more. And maybe you are wondering right now, you saw these concepts and the API, but what about the best live streaming settings for the YouTube? 
So right now, with this amazing new platform, we are supporting all the standard bit rate, all the standard resolutions from 240p up to 1080p. And a great feature about this product is you don't need to actually send all these different bit rates, all these different resolutions to YouTube. You just want to actually send us the highest bit rate you want to support, the highest resolution you want to support. And from there, in real time, you will actually transcode it to all lower qualities. So you are saving the bandwidth, you are saving the processing power, and we'll do the whole high lift, heavy lifting for you. What about encoder? Currently, we are supporting the RTMP flash streaming, and you want to use the H.264 video, and for audio codec, we are supporting the AAC. It's similar to what I explained earlier, as we transcode to lower bit rates, we also transcode to different uh, containers and different qualities so that people coming from iOS, Android, and Google TV can actually also see your stream as well. So you don't need to actually think about how you will change your stream into those different settings. We will actually do this for you. So this was the, the first streaming settings and the API overview. And as you may actually have, like, they, they, I, I know there are like developers in this platform, and I want to talk about a bit about the sample. All these samples I will be talking today, actually they are open source under the YouTube API samples. So if you are missing one thing or two, don't get excited. They are all open source. You can go there and still access them. And today I will be talking about just the Java sample, but we are actually supporting all client libraries from Python to PHP.net to Objective-C, many of them. And you can actually see what are the client libraries we support. And it's a totally RESTful API, even though you, if you don't want to use the Client library, you can just use the REST API. So the first example I want to go through is a, uh, the create broadcast. Today, I want to do like three things. I want to start creating a broadcast, then create, the, then create the stream, and then connect them together. So I will have something that is ready to live stream. Create broadcast is I will start with setting the metadata, and then I will set the status, and using those two, I will create a broadcast object. And now I want to create this broadcast object in YouTube. So I will create an insert request and execute it. So I will start with the broadcast snippet, the metadata. I set it and I created like the title. I set my scheduled time. And one thing to remember, actually, I'm just setting today just the required parameters. There are actually other parameters I explained earlier, and, but I'm just doing the minimal right now. And the second was the status. With the status, for the sake of this example, I set it to private. Using the previous, I set the snippet and the status, I'm creating a broadcast object. Now I want to actually insert this broadcast object to YouTube so it will actually appear in YouTube too. So I create the insert request. And using the client library, I have the live broadcast insert request for me, object, insert object insert class. And I wrap my broadcast object I created earlier inside this request. And I executed it. As I explained, it was a RESTful API. If everything got successfully the, by the client library, the JSON is parsed, and I got the return broadcast, which is the broadcast actually was inserted inside YouTube. So from there on, I can check that I, everything I did was successful or not. So we created the broadcast. The second step was the stream. Stream will be, like, I will do like in a similar tree. I will start with the metadata. I will set my ingestion settings. And I will create the stream object. At the end, I will insert into the YouTube. So I start with the snippet. I'll set the title, since this was the metadata. Then I will go over the ingestion settings. In the ingestion settings, as I explained, we are supported. We support right now RTMP. And just for the sake of this example, I set it 1080p. So this, this one is the one that the maximum resolution I want to support. I, want to, I will create the stream object right now and set the snippet and the ingestion settings I just created. Now the time is to create insert into YouTube. So I create the insert object again. It's, this time it's the live stream insert object. And I put my stream inside it. Once I executed it, I actually return that the created stream is from YouTube. Something to remember, as I explained earlier, this is your in, uh, entry point to YouTube, your stream's entry point. So once you create this stream, 
you are actually getting an ingestion address, the RTMP URL, and the stream name. So using the same API, we are actually get, uh, resolving them, the ingestion address, the stream name, so we know where to stream, where to send our streamer to. So we create the stream as well. So far, we create the event, we create the stream. Something's like missing. I think it's the connection. So we want to actually let the stream happen inside this event. So we'll, we'll create a bind request. We'll set the broadcast ID inside it. We'll set the set stream ID. Once we executed it, if it's successful, we'll actually return the broadcast as well. Now we can check if the binding is successful or not. So this was the Java sample, but I actually want to run it on my computer. So actually we see that it will be going to the YouTube. So actually I'm using the same example I worked, I just like showed, the create broadcast example. I will run it, and I'm using the OAuth 2 method so that it actually, it will do this creating stream, this example create the stream on my account, on my behalf. So I will give the allowed access, and once I allow access, actually I will start using my demo. So that's for this, say, the stream broadcast title, the event title, IO13 event. Okay, so I see that the event is created, it's just published. I will create an actual stream. So I just create the stream as well. As I explained earlier, once we create the stream, I see that I have an ingestion address. And I have my stream name, my unique stream name. So using those two, actually, I know where to stream my data into. And last thing, as I explained, now actually I bind them together. So the broadcast ID I created and stream ID I created, I bind them together. So actually, my event knows which stream to broadcast. Let's go one level down and go to YouTube website. I am in my account. As my account is enabled for live, so I can see that I have like live events here. The, the event I just created, I 13 event. And let's deep down this event. And I see that it's private, as I explained. It's scheduled ahead of time. I will go to ingestion settings. And I see that the event I just created, the IO stream event, is here. And it is 1080p, as I just described. So this was a demo for the Java. And I actually want to go one level further, and I created like a small streaming app that I will try to actually stream from here. Let's see. So first I will start the, let me actually turn this off. Okay, so first I will start with sign-in. Um, I use the Google Play account manager, so from there, my account is here. I will just pick my account, and now I will actually authorize the event, and I will create my event. So right now what's happening is I'm cre I created the event, I create the stream, my unique stream, and then I actually c connect them together. So, and... As I went to the live events, I just list them. And as you see, the, the one I just created before, the IO13 is over there. The one I just created right now, it is the live streaming event here. So I'm seeing this, and I will start streaming right now. And so looks like I started streaming. So let's see on the YouTube website. So this one. There we go. Event. And my live stream event, I'll actually go to live streaming to just see like what's happening here right now. So actually, yeah, my stream is started happening here. And actually from my API, I already clicked like start streaming from the API. So I didn't have to click because it was already, I requested to start the stream. 
And uh, right now, actually, our servers are like transcoding it, and in, in just a few seconds, we'll go live. So let's see it. I'll go back to my account, to my event. This time I'll just click. Mm -hmm. And my event is about to start. So let's give a few seconds then. Give it a couple of seconds. It looks like the demigods are sort of being favorable today. Can we, can we blame the network? Sorry? Can we blame the network? Yeah, sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. Give us a couple of seconds and... No, iOS 21 was actually, the question was if I was like streaming to iOS 13 or the, this event. Actually, as, as I just did here, I actually seemed to do a live streaming event. IO13 was the one I used it from my Java Eclipse. So today, actually, I showed the Eclipse, but you are free to use the language of your choice as well as something is happening. And uh, yeah, we are live. Yeah, there we go. You should get the audience on. Okay. I didn't want me to like, send the audience. Right. But. So that was all about my demo today. I just wanted to see that it was like that was that easy to show, uh, create the live event and go live. And from now on, actually, we can start taking questions. Yeah. If you have a question, We're happy to take questions. feel free to go to the microphone, and we'll take live questions, as well as we'll actually take questions from moderator link. The only question on the moderator link is, why is Ibrahim so awesome? <laughs> and I think I asked <laughs> Sorry, that. I'm not taking right. that question. <laughs> yeah, please. So it's, uh, it's all very nice. On, on iOS, you are presumably using HLS as the protocol, HTTP live streaming, right, mm -hmm. on iOS? Yes. yes. Yeah, using RTMP. Now, on Android, Android has had a much more tortured history of uh, the implementation of multimedia protocols. Uh, I'm sorry, we, I missed what you said there a little bit. On, on Android, on Android, are you also using HLS, which is supported by the Chrome browser, uh, it appears, or are you using a different protocol RTMP, yeah. to stream live to Android? We are, the question was if you are using a, a HLS or the, another protocol. On and Android. Explained earlier, we are actually using the RTMP right now. Are you, are you talking about playback or the streamer fr from the creator's uh, playback, side? Playback. Playback. Uh, playback HLS. HLS on Android? Um, I believe so. Yark? Yep. Yeah, I think it depends on the version of Android. Uh, so we do transcode. Uh, so I think sorry. Oh, sorry. One key feature of this platform is it transcodes to a number of different formats. In fact, we are the most data that the dog can send off. And that is different than the old version of the platform. Sure. Yeah, come on up. Oh, but by the way, the, the, um, the answer for, for, for most people that didn't hear it was uh, we transcode to a number of different formats. On most versions of Android, it is HLS on the later ones. On some, it's, it's something different. Yeah. Is the API uh, open to anyone or just open to some organization? Or the API is open to everyone. Anyway. Uh, it's public, uh, and it's, uh, it, yeah, it's public, and it's open right now. OK, so if I create a mobile app to uh, anyone, so they have to log in their account to allow, allow them to stream to, the, to, to YouTube, right? Yeah, so anyone can develop using the live API. The, the constraint we have right now is you need at least 1,000 subscribers before we, you can stream into your account. Uh, that's something we're working on. We're working on expanding live access. But the constraint right now is the person that's, whose account you're streaming to uh, needs to have a certain number of subscribers and be in good standing as a YouTube account. OK. Then, uh, uh, my next question is, what's the limitation to use the API? Yeah. Uh, sorry? Uh, what's the limitation to use the API? Uh, anyone can use the API. So if you're developing tools uh, to live stream to YouTube, uh, the API is public. Um, there's no other than the developer key and no actually the API is all public, public. As, as well as the documentation. The only thing that is like we are actually constrained about is the, the the channel that you will be live streaming. So if you have like a test channel or if you will like use one channel to use the API, you can always use the API. But once you start live streaming, at the end like when you develop when you develop your product and your product is ready, the people who will use the product will need a channel so that they will actually send their live streams into. Oh, OK. They need a channel. But how, can you, how, how do you scream the content of the live stream? 
So how do we manage content? Or, uh, or for example, if stream something, something is, should not be public, how do you detect that? How do you put it? Uh -huh. You're worried about spam. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we have, this is something that we've invested a lot of time and effort in at YouTube. So all, all the mechanisms that go in uh, that, that protect content on YouTube in general for video also apply to live streams. So people can flag the stream and it goes down. Uh, we have a tool called Content ID, which screens for infringing content. Uh, that, that's run against live streams as well. Okay. Anything else? All right, it's a shy audience. Thank you very much for listening to our talk. Thank you for listening online. Thanks uh, Ibrahim and I are hanging out here. Uh, feel free to come up and ask questions. Yeah. If you have any other questions, we will be in the sandbox area all day, and as well as the other YouTube experts, so you can always come and ask other questions, and we'll follow up everything. Thanks. Thank you.